Welcome to Mr. Fisher Flip's third grade math. Today's lesson will be from the Math Expressions math book, and we will be comparing unit fractions. We will use fraction bars and number lines to compare the unit fractions. Now when we talk about unit fractions, we need to understand that a unit is just one part. So if we look at this circle, there's only one part of the whole circle. And the unit is that one unit one unit of the whole part. We'll be looking at the unit fractions in detail today. Let's get started though with a review problem and see if you remember your quadrilaterals. Pause the video and see if you can answer these questions before I answer them. Write true or false for each sentence. All trapezoids are quadrilaterals. Well if we look at quadrilaterals, quadrilateral means all four sides. Is a trapezoid right here? Does it have four sides? Let's count one, two, three, four. What do you think the answer is? I agree with you. It is true. Now let's look at number two. Some quadrilaterals are squares. Squares. Rectangles. Rectangles. Parallelograms. Triangles. What was the definition of quadrilaterals? Four sides. Do all those have four sides? This one, the triangle, does not have four sides. I'm going to have to agree with you. This is false. Today, take a pause from the video and go study your sixes, your sevens, or your eights. When I say six, sevens, and eights, I mean your times tables. See if you can still do your sevens. Seven times seven is 49. Seven times eight is, that's the one I always have trouble with. See if you can do it. Practice your sevens, your eights, or even your sixes. Let's look at today's lesson, the math expressions. We're gonna be comparing the unit fractions. Looking at these unit fractions, we have one whole, and then we have all these other numbers that correlate, and we know that one half is one half of that whole. And so we can see that one half is really how many? Two halves equal one whole. I've already set it up so you can see that one fifth is set up here. How many times do we have one fifth? One, two, three, four, five. There are five times out of five parts that we see that those parts can equal one whole. How many times did it equal one whole, one part out of one whole. And how many parts did it take to get to one whole? Two parts out of two parts. So how many parts will it take to get to one ninth? Using one ninth as our th question mark. The answer is nine out of nine. When we compare unit fractions, we have to decide which one is bigger. Now notice unit fractions, the one is always going to be there in both of those questions. Then we look at the denominator, the 9 and the 5, to see which one is larger. Now, don't be deceived. If we see the 1 9th and 1 5th, you're going to naturally think that this is the bigger one because it has a bigger number underneath. But that is false. 1 9th is less than 1 5th. And if you look at the area that 1 9th covers versus the area that 1 5th covers, 1 5th is a lot bigger than 1 9th. Our next question, we have 1 3rd and 1 8th. And we have to decide which one's bigger. Based on what we just discussed, I think the 8 is going to be, that's correct, it's going to be smaller than the 1 3rd. We check our answer, we get it correct. Let's try another one. Let's try 1 4th and one half. Which one's gonna be bigger? Let's check your answer. Is it gonna be one fourth? It has a bigger denominator or one half? The answer is equal, greater than, or less than. One fourth is, check your answer, you got it. And just to make sure you have this right, let's do one last one. Let's try one fifth, one eighth. Which one's bigger? If we look at those two sizes, the one fifth is bigger. Excellent job. Well, let's try it on a number line. We need to compare the fraction bars or a number line. We're going to use the number line. Pause the video and see if you can get the right answer. We have one half, let's identify where we need to go, and one eighth. Which one extends the furthest? The one eighth? Nope, the one half. So I'm going to say one half is greater than one eighth. We got the answer correct. By getting the answer correct, that means you are well on the way to becoming a fraction genius. Go ahead and pause this one, see if you can get this one right. This one uses 1 fourth and 1 seventh. Well, here's 1 fourth, but I can't find 1 seventh. Where is 1 seventh going to be? 2, 3, 4, between 1 sixth and 1 fourth, there should be 1 fifth. This should be 
one seventh. And so which one's going to be bigger? One fourth or one seventh? One fourth. Check your answer. Our answer is correct. Greater than. Check to see if you can figure th this out. Let's do one fourth. How many parts will equal one fourth? There should be one two there we go so how many parts did it take four parts out of four how many would be six part one sixth i gave you the answer six out of six i want you to keep remembering the denominator helps us understand how many parts it takes to equal one whole okay i've put pause here in the video but i realized that trying to watch two videos you're going to have a hard time doing. What I'd like you to do is go and try to look at these two videos. They're both about three minutes long and they give you a better clarification on how to do comparing fractions. Our lesson is concentrated with what we do in the book but this might help you understand the comparing fractions a little bit better. So I encourage you after you watch the video to watch this video or this video by Math Olia which compares unit fractions with an English accent, mind you. Try it out. Here's another activity that you can do at home, and if we have time, we'll try to do it in class. Piet Mondrain was a famous Dutch painter, and he used to make these abstract art. And what you can do is you can uh, draw some lines and then color them in. We'll be talking about abstract art in one of our next art projects. Well, today's lesson is two pages long, and notice there is number bars, and you have to figure out greater than or less than to compare the unit fractions. And then on review, the remembering part, we need to be able to draw some rectangles, know how to locate the number line, and do some story problems. So let's check out one of these problems. Let's look at this problem right number 11. One-fifth versus one-half. So we can go up and see one-fifth is right here. It's pretty big, but if we look at one-half, it's even bigger. So we go down to here to number 11. One-fifth versus one-half. And what? Oh, I almost did it wrong. One-half is bigger than one-fifth. So one-fifth is less than one-half. Let's try one more. Let's try one-fourth and one-seventh. Here's one-seventh. It's pretty big. And look at one-fourth. Which one's going to be bigger? Ooh, one-fourth is almost two-sevenths. So which one's bigger? One fourth is greater than one seventh. And the problems I'll let you do on your own, but I want to make sure you're doing this part right. A rectangle is four centimeters long and two centimeters wide. So if we go one, two, three, four, and two centimeters wide, what's going to be the perimeter? So when we do the perimeter, what operation do we use? We use addition. So we're going to add up all the sides. When we use area, what operation do we use? We use multiplication. And so we take the one side times the other, and what do we get? Make sure you remember that's how you do it. This one we had trouble with on Friday, so I'm just going to review to make sure you understand. When we do two-thirds on a number line, we're doing two parts of how many? Two parts of three. So we need to divide this number line into three parts. And some of us try to do three parts this way. One, two, three. And that three out of three just doesn't make sense. So let's try halfway would be right about there. But I don't want a halfway. I want a third. So I'm going to buy it up and say, oh, that's about right. One third, one third. And then I can erase this. And then I can say, this is one third. This is two thirds. And what's this one at the end? It's three parts out of three. Three. And which one do we need to locate? We need to locate two-thirds. And so I put a dot there on two-thirds, and I have located two-thirds of one. This brings us to the end of the lesson. When and where did you watch the video? Sum up what you did see from this lesson. What was the main idea? See if you can understand what a unit fraction is versus fractions and write one question you might have from watching the video. And I have one extra bonus. Today's secret code. For those that watch today's lesson, I want you to write this secret code up at the top of your paper next to your name. You have to answer this question. What color is the sky? If you've done your WSQ, you'll get a bonus prize. Thank you, and good luck on tonight's lesson.